Hello everyone, welcome to Mentor School. My name is Ankit. And uh, in this video, we are going to learn about uh, SAP Identity Authentication Service or normally we say SAP IAS and which is a part of uh, BTP security domain within business technology platform. Before I would start this video information, guys, we have a lot of other you know, uh, services, uh, we have created a video on our channel. If you want, you can go ahead and learn about them. So some of them are BTP audit log management service, alert notification service, transport management service, continuous integration, continuous delivery service, BTP application logging service, BTP DevOps, BTP application auto scaler service, BTP identity provisioning service, this is what we are going to cover today. And BTP Cloud Identity Services, which again are nothing but uh, uh, IES and IPS only. Identity Access Governance, BTP Connectivity Service, BTP Destination Service, BTP Build Work Zone, and many more. So if you want to learn about these services, please go ahead and watch all other videos. Subscribe our channel, hit the bell icon so that Definitely, we have a lot of other videos planned for more services on BTP so that you can go ahead and upskill yourself in SAP BTP. So let's not delay more and let's get started with identity authentication service. So guys, what identity authentication services? So this is nothing but an identity provider which is provided by SAP. OK, and as a part of BTP. OK. If I talk about there are more identity providers we have in market like uh, Azure ADFS provided by Microsoft. We have a Google identity provider provided by Google. AWS IEM we have provided by Amazon Web Services. Okta, Ping Federate, SailPoint, there are many in market. Okay. Normally what these identity provider does. Guys, the main purpose of having the identity provider is to store the identity data. It could be user data. It could be system details, right? Why we are storing these identities so that we can connect this identity provider to a lot of applications we have in our landscape. OK, so whenever a user try to log in into these application, their login request will come to identity provider. In our case, our SAP IPS, IES and IES will launch a login page and they will authenticate themselves and then they will be able to access these applications. So you can say is this is the only task what an identity provider can do. You guys know this is just uh, one or two things where it stores identity data and it can provide authentication service, but also you can configure single sign on multi factor authentication, federated authorization, concurrent access management, uh, risk based authentication and conditional authentication many more things you can do for each of application you can create a branding in your login page right there are hundreds of things you can uh, perform so definitely each uh, identity provider has its own features and capabilities which could be a part of any access management tool and definitely your IES also has a lot of uh, different features but i have just listed some of them just try understanding this in a bit uh, more detail right there are two use cases. OK, one use case is IES can be used as a main identity provider. What do you mean by main identity provider? It means everything IES is only going to do. It means your all the user data, everything is in IES. And whenever user are trying to log into these application, there is already trust created with IES and IES will definitely go and search the user record in the identity store. And if it is success, then it will authenticate whole soul storage is everything in IES only. OK, the user data is available in IES only. But there are cases there are like maximum of the time. This is the case where client says that they already have some corporate identity provider in their landscape. OK, and then what they say if I already have a identity provider, why I should go ahead and maintain one more identity provider? OK, we don't want to do that. But SAP recommends that no. 
for all sap application you actually actually use should use is because it has been designed in such a way that it will support sap application in best way possible okay so what it happens here is in this case is work as a authentication service in proxy authentication service i would say here it was working in the main authentication service main int provider but here it works as a proxy identity provider what it does in this case whenever a person is trying to log in into any of the sap application definitely ies is there so the login request will be sent to ies okay but ies says that hey application i i can see in my configuration azure ad is configured for you so what will do it will delegate the authentication request to azure ad okay yeah definitely i have mentioned multiple normally one company will have only one but yes other companies may have some may have okta or some can have google iam or aws iam then definitely you know we can have only one right so what will happen in those cases where is works as a proxy authentication service it doesn't ath do authentication actually it delegate the authentication request to any of identity providers they will authenticate and respond back to ies and then ies will respond back to these btp applications and then people will be able to access that application okay so i hope these two scenarios uh, should be very very clear to you let me just go and show you uh, you know a view of this ies so guys first of all i would like to clarify here ies is a part of cloud identity services previously ies and ips these two services so there is a video if you you know in our channel for sap ips you know these these this already covered right so sap ips was a different system sap ies was a different system but now they have clubbed and have made one system called cloud identity services in which this tab this tab this and this they are their four tabs are related to ies okay and this tab is related to ips so if i scroll down this, these all tiles are for ies this all tiles are for ips again these are for ies and i this is all also for ies and this is also for ies okay definitely monitoring and all would definitely be a bit common for others both but yeah normally this is how we differentiate but now they all are part of one umbrella which is called cloud identity services okay so guys we can see we can store all our identity data here right we can store all our identity data here right also there are a lot of other you know things we can import user we can export user we can do real type provisioning you know we can do all those lot of settings we can do here and also we can onboard our corporate identity products like if you want to onboard okta ping federate azure ad google iam and all we can onboard it here right that's what i was talking about here right you can onboard your corporate and deployer to have this type of setup if client is looking for that okay so i hope uh, you understood a bit about this if you really wanted to learn these uh, ies ips in detail we cover these things in depth as a part of our btp security training please go ahead and uh, let us know and uh, we'll definitely try helping you out okay so guys just wanted to give you a quick view that uh, you know we uh, offer lot of uh, trainings on you know btp so if i say btp administration and uh, btp uh, security you know btp build process uh, development we can say with rap development uh, with capm uh, okay and development with uh, uh, build apps which is no code low code application development extension shoot sap iag okay btp administration i already opened btp devops btp ai and many more right signavio okay so guys we cover we have we offer these multiple courses like btp administration btp security in which identity and access management of platform and uh, btp applications are covered application security is covered right btp development with restful app programming btp developed with uh, cloud application programming cap 
BTP build apps, which is no code, low code application development. BTP extension shoot where how to extend on premise and cloud systems using BTP. Identity and access governance, which is nothing but a replica of GRC AC in on premise. And uh, BTP DevOps. How to automate complete software development lifecycle using BTP DevOps services, BTP AI. And then others BTP Signavi or SAC, SAC planning, data warehouse cloud, which is data sphere now. If you're looking for any cloud training or even on-premise trainings as well, please reach out to us. We'll definitely be able to help you. Thank you so much.